Good evening everyone. Habari za jioni kila mmoja wenu. Yes. Let us open the Bible. Tufungue Biblia and to the book of John chapter 9. Kwa kitabu cha Yohana mlango wa 9. Book of John chapter 9. Yohana mlango wa 9 from verse 1. Kuanzia kwa mstari wake wa kwanza. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, and that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, and but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me, while it is day and the night is coming. When no one can work, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Uh, when uh, he had uh, said these things, uh, he uh, spat on the ground and uh, made the clay uh, with saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with uh, the clay, and uh, he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed, and uh, came back seeing. Up to verse 7. Hadim <laughs> um, This time uh, I went to uh, uh, Germany for the Europe uh, youth camp. Wakati huu nimeenda katika nchi ya Ujerumani kwa kambi ya vijana ya Europa. And uh, actually until last year uh, they were having the meeting uh, in their own church. Hakika hadi mwaka jana walikuwa na mkutano katika kanisa lao. And the size of the church is a little bit Uh, slightly bigger than the B hall. Lakini ukumbi wao wa ibada kidogo ni kubwa kwa ukumbi wa ba. And but then last year, lakini mwaka jana, Pastor Parker he went to uh, Germany and then he said, mchungaji paka kaenda katika nchi ya Germany na kawaambia, and the gospel has started from Germany. Injili ilianza katika nchi ya Germany. And theology also started from Germany. Na theology pia ilianza katika nchi ya Germany. And now God he wants to work in a big way. Na sasa Mungu anataka kufanya kazi katika njia kuu. And so I want you to also do the work in the big way. Na hivyo basi nahitaji muweze kufanya kazi katika njia kuu pia. And so this time kwa hivyo wakati huu now uh, they uh, did the camp Uh, in like uh, KICC of Germany Frankfurt wakati huo wakafanya kambi ya vijana katika ukumbi kama KICC katika nchi ya Ujerumani about 2000 people can sit together ambali ambapo watu 2000 waliweza kukaa pamoja and then and just to hire that place it cost 10 million na kukodi hiyo sehemu ina gharimu milioni kumi. And but then the missionaries uh, they pledged together for that uh, hall. Now a missionary wakafanya nadhiri kwa ajili ya ukumbi huo. And uh, they were doing the camp in uh, such a big place for the first time. Na wakafanya kambi katika sehemu iliyo kuu kama huo kwa wakati wa kwanza. Actually in Germany not many people are interested in the word. Hakika katika nchi ya Germany si watu wengi wanapendezwa na neno. Some of them uh, they are not interested in learning the word. Kwa hivyo wengi wao hawapendezwi na kujifunza neno. So they prepared a separate class uh, during Pastor Park's sermon time. Kwa hivyo wakaandaa madarasa maalum wakati wa mahubiri ya mchungaji Park. It's a mind lecture time. Kama wakati wa mind lecture. The place where you don't even open the Bible. Pale ambapo hufungui hata Biblia. And so those people who are not interested in the word. Kwa hivyo wale ambao hawapendezwi na neno. Yes, uh, they have gathered there and also listen to the mind lecture. Wakakusanyika pale na wanasikiza somo kuhusu nia. And so, you know, it's not easy also to preach the gospel in Germany. Na pia sio rahisi kuhubiri injili katika nchi ya Ujerumani. And because uh, their life is so abundant, you know, they're not interested in God. They don't even feel the need of uh, seeking for his grace and his mercy. Kwa sababu katika maisha yao hawana juhudi ya kumtafuta Mungu wala kutafuta neema yake na rehema zake. Everyone that's why I realize that difficulties are good. Ndiposa nikatambua kila mmoja wenu kwa magumu ni kitu kizuri. Problem is good. Hali ngumu ni nzuri. Why because it makes our heart to become humbled. Ni kwa sababu inanyenyekeza mioyo yetu. And they rely on his grace and his mercy. Na tuweze kutegemea katika neema zake na rehema. Amen. Amen. Yes. They don't need they don't need the help of God. Hawahitaji usaidizi wa Mungu. 
Yes, and uh, you know they don't want to be you know bothered by other people. Na pia hawataki kusumbuliwa na watu wengine. And so no one wanted to come to this camp. Kwa hivyo hakuna mtu aliyetaka kuja katika kambi hii. Yes, that's how you know people in Germany they are. Hivyo ndivyo watu katika nchi ya Ujerumani wanavyokaa. And because you know even there <coughs> Have you ever heard about the highway called Autobahn? Je, umeisikia katika njia kuu inayoitwa Autobahn? Have you heard about that? Je, umeisikia kuhusu hilo jina? Autobahn is a super highway in Germany. Uh, Autobahn ni njia iliyo kuu katika nchi ya Ujerumani. There's no speed limit. Hauwezi uh, kuendesha gari katika a uh, uh, speed uh, uh, speed uh, that is like uh, Eight, eight lane road ni kama barabara ambayo inachukua magari nane kwa wakati mmoja and uh, the last row na upande wa mwisho is uh, the lane for you know like mercedes uh, bmw ferrari lamborghini austin martin those kind of cars na upande wa mwisho inachukua magari kama hayo volkswagen Volkswagen yes a such kind of supercar a magari ya thamani kama hizo and so i was also driving on the highway kwa hivyo nilikuwa naendesha pia katika hiyo barabara yao kuu and then you hear this noise vum unasikia sauti vum hivyo vum vum mine is vum his is boom i think his car is toyota mine is mercedes <laughs> Yes. So Mercedes, Ferrari, Volkswagen, BMW, you know, those kind of cars are like vum. Na magari ya kama Mercedes, Volkswagen zinafanya vum. Yes. Like, you know, we are going in the same direction, you know. Zinaenda katika sehemu moja. But then they still pass you vum. Lakini bado zinakupita vum. So, you know, I was driving like 130, 140. Nilikuwa naendesha katika speed ya 130 na 40 hivi. So, I think uh, their car was like 200, 220 like that. Na fikiria yao ilikuwa ni kama 200, 220 hivyo. Yes, there's no speed limit. Kwa hivyo hakuna haja kutumia speed kiasi. But I asked the, the missionary. Na nikamuuliza missionary. Why if they drive like this then they don't get into car accidents? Mbona wanapoendesha hivyo wahusiki katika ajali ya magari? They said no. Wakasema la. Because ni kwa sababu they keep the law very well. Ni kwa sababu wanatunza sheria ipasavyo. Yes, yeah, so, so you know they don't even cut in line like brother Paul, right? Na kwa hivyo hawaingii katika upande wengine kama ndugu Paul. Yes, they stay on line. Wanakaa katika upande wao. But what do we do? Na, nini? There's a traffic then we go around and then go to the front. <laughs> ah, kama kuna msongamano ya magari tunaenda kando na kwenda mbele yao. So, so missionary they say you know they keep the law very well so there's no accident. Na missionary akasema wanatunza sheria ipasavyo hivyo basi hakuna ajali ya magari. When I went you know the road is so nice. Napo nilipoenda kule barabara ni mzuri ya kupendeza. There's no speed bump. Hakuna ah, hata bumps katika barabara. And there's no potholes. Na pia hakuna mashimo barabarani. Yes, you drive you know 120 140 like you don't feel like you're driving 140. Wao naendesha katika 120:30 hivyo hauisi nikana kwamba unaendesha hivyo. You know even the cars are so nice. Hata magari ni ya kupendeza. You know usually where is the side brake? Au uh, mara nyingi brake iko upande gani? Side brake. A side brake iko upande gani? Brother Paul, where is, usually where is the side brake in Kenya? Huh? Yes. Uh, Uh, on the left hand side right upande wa kushoto ever sisters do you know where the side brake is wadada <laughs> unajua what is side brake a side brake ni nini the brake which is on your side right ni ile yes brake ya gari ambayo iko upande wako so usually the side brake is here and then you pull ah uh, hiyo uh, side brake huwa mara nyingi inakuwa upande huu na unaivuta and the car will not move on neutral sindio na sasa gari itaenda katika hali ya kawaida yes some cars a magari mengine you know, they have it on on the on the foot foot side brakes now wako ina iko katika upande wa kanyaga katika upande wa chini au upande wa kushoto but in germany lakini katika nje ya germany the side brake is a button na side brake ni kama kitu ya kubofia press a button unaibofia and then it's a side brake alafu inakuwa ni side brake press again unaibofia tena the side brake is released na side brake imeondolewa there's also a, on top of that button there's a auto side brake na hata pia katika juu ya hiyo kidude bado tena kuna auto side brake at the red light na uh, red light mwangaza uh, mwangaza yes. rangi nyekundu you stop the car unaisimamisha gari engine switches off automatically to save fuel 
engine na asimama mara moja ili iweze kusiweze kutumia mafuta nyingi it turns off ainazimika you remove your foot from your brake unaondoa mguu katika brake engine turns on automatically na inahakisha ina, ina tena uh, moja kwa moja when you remove uh, uh, at the red light unapoondoa hiyo uh, mwangazo wa nyekundu you move your foot from the brake unaondoa mguu wako katika uh, brake automatically the side brake holds the tire na sasa moja kwa moja hiyo side brake inashikilia gurudumu it's so good right ni kitu cha kupendeza sivyo i i put my foot on the accelerator naweka mguu katika accelerator of the sudden my body is like ooh like this kwa ghafla mwili wangu nako vuvu hivi so you know their life is like that kwa hivyo maisha yao ni hivyo well off hawako vizuri they don't need god in their life hawahitaji mungu katika maisha yao no, they don't need his grace hawahitaji neema yake they don't need his mercy hawahitaji rehema zake that's why their heart is very far from god diposa mioyo yao iko mbali kabisa na mungu so they don't want to share anything about the bible hawataki kusikiza chochote kuhusiana na biblia every this uh, true gospel also started from germany na injili ya kweli pia ilianza katika nchi ya ujerumani i'm from uh, you know martin luther ah kutoka kwa martin luther but they're not interested now in listening to the word of god lakini hawapendezi sasa kusikiza neno la mungu actually a missionary told me hakika missionary aliniambia in german schools katika mashule ya ujerumani in german schools katika shule za ujerumani teachers walimu they teach the students wanawafunza wanafunzi that homosexual is good ya kuwa uh, homosexual ama ngono ya jinsi ya moja ni mzuri everyone is homosexual good or bad je ngono ya jinsi ya moja ni mzuri ama ni mbaya it's evil right ni kitu kiovu sivyo but in germany lakini katika nchi ya ujerumani they say that it's good wanasema ni kitu kizuri it's not so bad si si mbaya sana you need to respect other people's feeling ni lazima uweze kuheshimu hisia ya watu wengine i realize that kenya is the best country ni katambua kwa nchi ya kenya ni nchi bora zaidi So don't go to Germany okay? Kwa hivyo usiende katika nchi ya Ujerumani sawa? Sawa? How come your 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 answer is a lukewarm? No, mbona jibu yenu iko chini? Yes. And uh, such a place that we had a camp. Na sehemu kama hiyo tukawa na kambi. And uh, God sent many pastors and many youth to come over. Na Mungu akawatuma wachungaji wengi na vijana wengi wakajitokeza. And uh, for that uh, you know three days uh, three nights and four days na kwa hizo usiku tatu na siku nne you know in such a country like that kwa nchi kama hiyo god he has sent about 300 pastors mungu akawatuma takriban wachungaji 300 and then out of them na miongoni mwao about five six of them were like key key bishops na kama tano sita hivi walikuwa ni maaskofu wakuu katika nchi and uh, Uh, the, the key bishop of a pentecostal church he also came na askofu mkuu wa pentecostal kanisa pentecostal la kaja also you know from finland the one bishop also came na katika nchi ya finland pia askofu mmoja kaja also from germany na, one pastor came na pia katika nchi ya germany mchungaji mmoja kaja so these pastors after listening to the word of god na hao wachungaji baada ya kusikiza neno la mungu you know they are hard completely humbled na mioyo yao ikaweza kunyenyekea kabisa and they wanted to listen to past park even more wakataka kusikiza kutoka kwa mchungaji park hata zaidi before the word of god Be, uh, kabla ya neno la mungu i saw how their hearts uh, you know humbling down niliona jinsi ambavyo mioyo yao ilikuwa ikinyenyekea truly i was able to see wherever past the park he goes so god was working so powerfully inside of them hakika niliweza kuona kwa pale popote pale mchungaji park anavyoenda mungu anafanya kazi kwa uwezo mkuu ndani yao and so after the youth camp was finished na baada ya kukamilika kwa kambi ya vijana now i went to france nikaenda katika nchi ya Faransa you know like you know European Union na katika umoja ya bara ya Europa the European Union umoja wa bara ya Europa there is no no border hakuna mpaka for example from here to Uganda if you want to cross then you have to bring your passport or uh, you know you have to you know go through the immigration KRA and many things right na kama check kama kwa mfano hapa Kenya ukitaka kuvuka mpaka um, ya Uganda lazima uende katika KRA uchunguzwe na polisi na hata pia utoke utoe mastakabadhi ya kusafiri But then there lakini pale there is no checkpoint hakuna sehemu kama hizo you move like you feel like you're moving from one county to another county unatembea ni kana kwamba unatoka katika kaunti moja hadi nyingine you know, 
I went by the bus. Anilienda kupitia kwa basi. Bus just went. Na basi kapita tu. And the missionary told me. Na missionary akaniambia. Now we are in France. Sasa hivi tuko katika nchi ya Ufaransa. You don't have to go through the immigration. Kwa hivyo ustahili kupitia ofisi ya uhamiaji. Nothing like that. Hakuna kitu kama hicho. It's very convenient. Ni kitu kizuri. And then I went to France and uh, we had a mind lecture in one of the national university in France. Na tukaenda katika nchi ya Faransa nikafanya tukafanya mind lecture katika chuo kimoja kikuu katika nchi ya Faransa. And then uh, we had a Bible conference at one Ghanaian church. Na pia tukafanya warsha ya Biblia katika kanisa moja. I think you realize one thing. Natumai mmetambua kitu kimoja. I am talking very quiet compared to before I went, right? Naongea pole pole ukilinganisha na kabla niende. Because missionary told me. Kwa sababu missionary aliniambia, Pastor, mchungaji, you should talk quiet. Unastahili kuongea pole pole. Don't scream. Usipaze sauti. Because in Germany, katika nchi ya Ujerumani, if you if you scream, unapopaza sauti, or and if you repeat something twice, na unaporudia kitu pia mara mbili, they will stand up and leave. Wataamka na waweza kwenda. I said why? Nikauliza ni kwa nini? Because just because you hear one time some important things you need to hear twice thrice four times five times six times seven times ten times na kwa sababu ni kitu cha maana unastahili kusikiza mara moja mara mbili mara tatu mara tano mara sita hivyo hivyo they say they think like he says that they think like this wao wakasema wanafikiria hivi if you scream unapopaza sauti they think wanafikiria we can hear you so well why are you screaming tunaweza kukusikiza vizuri mbona upaze sauti you think we are deaf je unafikiria sisi ni kiziwi why are you despising us mbona anatudharau sisi yes to them screaming is like that. Aku kwa kwa wao kupaza sauti ni hivyo. So I think I'm used to now being quiet. Kwa hivyo nafikiria na nimezoea hali ya kuongea pole pole. Quiet is better or screaming is better? Kuongea kwa sauti ya chini ni mzuri ama kupaza sauti ndio mzuri? You want to be Europeans, huh? Mnataka kwa watu wa Europa, si? You have to know one thing if your mind changes like Europeans then Now you will fall into sins like homosexuals and those things also. Lazima mjue kitu kimoja kama ni yenu itakuwa kama ya watu wa Europa basi mtaweza kuangukia dhambi kama kufanya ngono ya jinsia moja. If you repeat something more than two times. Unaporudia jambo moja mara mbili. Why are you consider, considering us as a fool and uh, saying something twice? Mbona anachukua kama watu wa pumbavu diposo na rudia jambo mara mbili? You think we are a fool? Je, unafikiria sisi ni watu wa pumbavu? They say, you know, they think like that. Wao wanasema wanafikiria hivyo. But lakini, you know, I am used to sindio. Nime nimezoea mambo kama sindio. Sindio? Sindio. Yes, I'm used to the sindio, sindio. Nimezoea mambo <laughs> sindio, sindio. So all of a sudden I was preaching in Ghanaian church. Ah, mara kwa ghafla nikawa na ubiri katika kanisa hiyo. Of sudden my volume began to go up. Kwa ghafla sauti yangu ikaanza kupanda juu. Are you righteous or a sinner? Je, nyinyi wenye haki au wenye dhambi? But you know Ghanaian church I think uh, they love uh, screaming. Lakini katika kanisa hiyo wanapenda kupaza sauti. And for about uh, one hour 30 minute about two hours I felt like I was confused. I thought I was in Africa. Na kwa kama lisani moja na nusu ama masaa mawili nilitanganyikiwa nikafikiria nilikuwa ni bara la Afrika. You know they were all singing. Wao wote walikuwa wakiimba. Dancing. Wakifanya dance. And also my wife came out and also dancing. Na kwa ghafla mke wangu akajitokeza pia akadance akafanya dance nao. And then I also scream and Na, yell and preach the gospel. Nikapaza sauti nikahubiri injili. And all the Ghanians who came to that conference they all received salvation. Na hao watu wote waliokuja waliweza kupokea wokovu. Uh, you know I thought ah it's not easy to preach the gospel in Europe. Na nikafikiria kuwa si rahisi kuhubiri injili katika bara ya Europa. But then I was able to see how there are still many souls who need to hear this gospel in Europe. Lakini niweza kuona jinsi ambavyo kuna nafsi wengi ambao wanataka kusikiliza injili katika bara ya Europa. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so who wants to go to Europe as a missionary? Kwa hivyo nani anataka kwenda katika bara ya Europa kama missionary? Are you in theology school? Je, uko katika chuo cha teolojia? Yes, come to theology school starting from tomorrow. Uingie katika chuo cha teolojia kuanzia kesho. Yes, maybe. Pengine. Yeah, you never know, right? Auwezi ukajua. Yes, maybe uh, some of you, you know, brother Paul or go to you know, Germany as a missionary. Wengine wenu kama ndugu Paul anaweza enda kama missionary katika nchi ya Germany. Pastor Francis. Na mchungaji Francis. Yes, he goes to France. Francis is going to France. Na Francis aende katika nchi ya Ufaransa kama missionary. Yes. Ndio. And also who else is here? Na mwingine nani tena? Yes, so we have our 
hopeless theology students to now wanafunzi wetu wa theology ambao hawana matumaini going to UK as a missionary waende katika UK kama missionary theology students amen look you know even their voice is hopeless hata sauti yao haina tumaini theology students amen ay 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 everyone you understand right kila mmoja wenu mnaelewa Actually this time when I went uh, there are also you know many uh, Africans who live in Europe. Na wakati nilipoenda pia kuna waafrika wengi wanaoishi katika bara la Europa. And also most of the countries in Europe they also speak English as well. Na katika nchi nyingi za Europa pia wananena katika lugha ya Kiingereza pia. So I felt that wow it will be really nice. Na nikafikiria kwa itakuwa bora kiasi gani. If our Kenya pastors also go to Europe as a missionary. Kama wachungaji wetu wa Kenya pia wanazaenda katika nchi ya Europa kama wa missionary. From now on you you will find and the one by one is appearing from Kenya. Kuanzia sasa utapata mmoja baada ya mwingine anapotea katika nchi ya Kenya. As a missionary. Wakienda kama wa missionary. But I'm telling you right now Europe is not good. Na waambia sasa hivi ya kuwa Europa si mzuri. Yes, anyways uh, not only that also I went to this one national university and also gave my lecture. Na sio hivyo tu peke yake nilienda katika hicho kimoja kikuu cha kitaifa nikapea na missionary there he told me. Na missionary pale aliniambia mchungaji when you give my lecture unapopeana kufunzo kuhusu nia don't talk about god usiongee kuhusu mungu because in the university kwa sababu katika chuo kikuu you are not allowed to do the uh, the the pastoral work in the university au itajiki kufanya kazi ya huduma ya mchungaji katika chuo kikuu so don't talk about god kwa hivyo usiongee kuhusu mungu yes nikasema ndio but as i was giving my lecture lakini nilipokuwa nikipeana mafunzo kuhusu nia i forgot nikasahau And then I began to talk about God. Nikaanza kuongea kuhusu Mungu. No, I I got to believe that you know God is together with me. Nikaanza kuamini kuwa Mungu yu pamoja nami. The best mindset is those who believe that God is behind my back. Na wale ambao wako na nia iliyo sawa ni wale ambao wanaamini kwa Mungu yuko nyuma yao. And then I remembered. Na kisha nikakumbuka. Oops. I was told not to talk about God. Niliambiwa nisiweze kuongea kuhusu Mungu. But then amazingly enough. Lakini kitu cha kushangaza No one was leaving the seat. Hakuna mtu ambaye alikuwa akinyanyuka katika kiti chake. You know, there were our students, high school students from Korea. Na kulikuwa na wanafunzi wetu wa shule ya upili katika nchi ya Korea. They are the one who is standing up one by one and then leaving. Wao ni wale ambao walikuwa wanajitokeza mmoja baada ya mwingine wakitoka. But the university students from France, no one was leaving. Everybody they were sitting down and they were listening to the word. Lakini hao wanafunzi wa chuo kikuu cha Ufaransa hakuna hata mmoja wao alikuwa akitoka walikao wakisikiza neno. As I saw that. Niliponaona hivyo. As I gave my lecture I was told not to talk about God. Nilipokuwa nikipeana funzo kuhusu moyo niliambiwa kwa nisiongee kuhusu Mungu. But we can talk about God. Lakini tunaweza kuongea kuhusu Mungu. Ah this thing it works. Ah hii kitu inafanya. It works. Inafanya. We can preach the gospel. Tunaweza tukahubiri injili. No one is leaving. Na hakuna mtu ambaye anatoka. I was able to see how truly according to the word of Pastor Park. Anikaona hakika kupitia kwa neno la mtumishi wa Mungu mchungaji Park. There is a great works to be done in European countries. Ah kuna kazi kubwa ya Mungu ambayo inastahili fanywa katika bara la Europa. These people who are saying homosexual is fine, it's good. Wao ambao wanasema kwa jinsia ya kiume, ngono ya jinsia ya kiume ni mzuri. They don't need his help, they don't need his grace, his mercy. Hawahitaji neema ya Mungu, msaada wa Mungu na hata rehema zake. But this time when I went I was able to strong I feel that you know they really need all of you over there with this gospel. Na wakati nilipoenda nikahisi kuwa wao wanawahitaji nyinyi nyote muwe mali pale na injili. For you to go there to witness of this gospel. Na ili muende pale na muweze kushuhudia hii injili. To preach the gospel. Muhubiri injili. Amen. Amen. I hope all of you can come to theology school. Natumai kila mmoja wenu muingie katika shule ya theolojia. And live for the gospel. Na muishie injili. Next I went to <coughs> In the evening, na wakati wa jioni, I moved from France to Netherlands. And katoka katika nchi ya Faransa nikaenda Netherlands. Everyone, you heard about the Hague, right? Ameskiza kuhusu Hague ya Hague. Have you ever heard about Hague? Je, ameskiza kuhusu Hague? I also got to know of Hague because of president and the deputy president right nilijua kuhusu hague kupita kwa rais na naibu wake yes there is a international international criminal court there right na kuna koti ya kimataifa mali pale and so i went there nikaenda pale because there is this one brother whom i know kwa sababu kuna ndugu mmoja ambaye namfahamu so i wanted to connect him to the church nilitaka kumuunganisha pamoja na kanisa so 
uh, in the Netherlands, katika Netherlands is also very corrupt. Na pia ni nchi ambayo imepotoka. In Netherlands, katika nchi ya Netherlands, the drug is legal. Uh, madawa inaruhusiwa kutumika. Yes. Is there anyone who wants to do drugs? Je, kuna mtu ambaye anataka kutumia madawa ya kulevia? No one. If you want to, you, know, you can go to Netherlands as a missionary, right? Okay, wana tako naweza enda katika nchi ya Netherlands kama missionary. Yes, so then I don't know. Yes, juu lakini. Yes, so also in you know, the Netherlands, I you know also we preach the gospel to their brother again. Na katika Netherlands tukabiria huyu ndugu injili tena. And then came back to Germany. Na tukarudi katika nchi ya Germany. And then uh, we had a post conference. Na tukawa na mkutano baada ya mkutano uliokuwa. And also there preached the gospel again. Na tukahubiri injili tena. And then arrived here yesterday. Na nikafika hapa siku ya jana. Actually I always had this kind of a fixed thought about Europe. Ah uh, mara nyingi nakuwa na hii wazo moja ambayo imekuwa kwangu kuhusu Europa. Hey, Europe is not easy to preach the gospel. Katika bara la Europa si rahisi kuhubiri injili. Yes, it is going to be very difficult for you to preach the gospel in Europe. Itakuwa kwako ngumu kuhubiri injili katika bara la Europa. Sio rahisi. But this time when I went, lakini wakati huu nilipoenda, I was able to see the great works of God. Niliweza kushuhudia kazi kuu za Mungu. People listening to the mind lecture. Watu wakisikiza funzo kuhusu nia. People listening to the word of God. Watu wanasikiza neno la Mungu. So as I think about that. Kwa hivyo nikifikia kuhusu hilo jambo. God he has prepared the mighty work and the great works in the European countries. Na Mungu ameandaa kazi kubwa katika bara la Europa. There in Germany, katika uh, nchi ya Ujerumani. Uh, Pastor Park he spoke often with the book of John chapter 9. Ah mchungaji Park alinena mara nyingi kupitia kwa kitabu cha Yohana mlango wa 9. Chapter 9 verse 1. Ah um, mlango wa 9 mstari wa 1. It says now as the Jesus passed by he saw a man who was blind from birth. Ah inasema kuwa hata alipokuwa akipita alimona mtu akipofu tangu kuzaliwa Now as Jesus passed by wakati Yesu alipokuwa akipita She saw a man Akamuona mtu Even as Jesus was passing by wakati Yesu alipokuwa akipita He saw this blind man Akamuona huyu mtu kipofu Even being a blind Kila mmoja wenu kwa kipofu Is considered as a one of the curse in, Ina inachukuliwa kama mmoja wapo ya laana In Israel Katika Israeli But now Lakini sasa Jesus he saw that man A Yesu akamuona huyu mtu Even it is not this man who saw Jesus and came to Jesus. Si huyu mtu aliyemuona Yesu na kumjia. But it is Jesus who spotted this man. Na ni Yesu aliyemtazama huyu mtu kwanza. He was born blind. Alizaliwa kipofu. And then what did he do? Na akafanya nini? He went to him. Akamwendea. And then spat on the ground. Na akaweza kutema mati katika inchi. Akatengeneza And then put the clay on his eyes. Akatengeneza udongo na kuiweka katika uso wake. Even he is a blind man. Ye ni mtu kipofu. In the society he was considered as a person who is cursed. Katika jamii alichukuliwa kama mtu ambaye amelaaniwa. However Jesus he came to such a person. Na hata hivyo Yesu akaja kwa watu kama hao. Who? Who nani? A man who was cursed. A mtu ambaye amelaaniwa. A man who is blind. Mtu ambaye ni kipofu. Everyone on the streets on the streets katika barabara at times so we find the blind people right mara nyingine tunaona watu ambao ni kipofu what do you do basi unafanya nini is it easy for you to go and approach them je ni rahisi kwako kwenda na kuwakaribia is it easy also although you want to help ijapo kwa unataka kuwasaidia not easy for you to easily approach and go and help and give support right sio rahisi kwako kuwaendea na hata kuwafikia na kuwapatia msaada sivyo even hourly this man who was born blind na hata hivyo huu mtu aliyezaliwa kipofu even he was a miserable person alikuwa ni mtu ambaye maisha yake yamefaidika he many sadness and difficulties and problems in his life alikuwa na huzuni na magumu katika maisha yake however jesus is the one who spotted that blind man first hata hivyo yesu ni mtu ambaye alimuona huyu mtu kwanza hey blind man hey mtu kipofu hey one who is in the problem na shida yako ni gani the one who is in suffering a yule ambaye anateseka the one who is in difficulty yule ambaye uko ndani ya magumu hey i want to help you nataka nikusaidie hey, i want to guide you nataka nikuongoze i want to lead you nataka ni kuongoze nataka ni kusaidie do you have a problems in life je unao shida katika maisha do you have sufferings in life je unao mateseko katika maisha yako unao magumu katika maisha yako do you have also 
problems in your heart. Je unao shida ndani ya moyo wako? Everyone, God she sees you first. Ye Mungu anakuona wewe kwanza. It is not you who see Jesus. Sio wewe uliyemwona Yesu. It is Jesus who will see you first. Ni Yesu ambaye amekuona kwanza. And it is Jesus who will come and approach you. Na ni Yesu ambaye anakukujia wewe. And it is Jesus. Na ni Yesu who is concerned about you. Ambaye anashughulika kuhusu wewe. It is Jesus. Ni Yesu who is worried about you. Ambaye anakuwa na hofu kuhusu wewe. Jesus he comes to whom? Yesu alikujia nani? The one who is a blind. Kwa huyu mtu aliyekuwa kidogo. The one who has a problem. Ni mtu ambaye akona shida. The one who has a difficulties. Yule mtu ambaye ana magumu. The one who has a suffering. Yule mtu ambaye anateseka. The one who has a sadness in your heart. Yule huzuni ndani ya moyo wako. such a person. Kwa mtu kama huyo. Jesus he sees that person first and he comes to that person. Yesu anamuona huyo mtu kwanza na kumuendea. When I look onto myself. Napojitazama mimi. I'm a such a weak person. Mimi ni mtu ambaye ni mdhaifu mno. When I see myself. Napojitazama. I'm a such a lacking person. Mimi ni mtu ambaye nimepungukiwa. When I see myself. Napojitazama. I am not a person who can even be called a pastor. This time, I went to Germany. And then, you know, I was in charge of the program. So, Pastor Park, he first arrived. And then he sat in the front seat. He sat in the front seat. And then I told uh, uh, I came back here to check. Whether he seated at the right place. Whether everything is going to be fine or not. After everything. I was about to leave. But Pastor Ryu Hong Ryu. Ryu. He told me, hey, come here, come here. Yes, Pastor, what's wrong? Pastor Park is looking for you. So he said in the front, so I quickly went. Yes, Pastor, did you look for me? And then he told me, hey, Johan, hey, Johan. you translate. My heart just dropped. But there is this one thing that I was taught in the church. You should never say no. You think after you say yes. Do you understand? You didn't say yes. Do you understand? Yes. yes. So. <laughs> I said yes. Nikasema ndiyo. You know that time I didn't even have Bible. Wakati huo hata sikuwa na Biblia. Because I was in charge of the program. Nilikuwa nasimamia ratiba. So you know I was just running up and down up and down with with the program. Nilikuwa nashughulika hapa pale na hiyo ratiba mkononi. So I quickly went. Kwa hivyo kwa haraka nikaenda. My heart began to drop. Na moyo wangu ikaanza kushuka. At that time no one had to tell me you have to be humbled. Na wakati huo kuna mtu ambaye anastahili kuniambia una staili kunyenyekea. Your heart just go down all the way there. Moyo wako inashuka tu Oh my God! I'm not even prepared. I'm supposed to translate. Because it was a European camp. It was a Europe camp. So you know there were more people who were speaking English during the day. And then in the evening there were many, uh, you know, uh, you know, German, uh, you know, speakers. So in the morning and also during the day, you know, we translated in English, and in the evening session, you know, we translated in German. Now, wakati wa mchana tunatafsiri katika lugha ya kingereza, na wakati wa jioni tunatafsiri katika lugha ya German. Napojitazama. You know, I'm like a blind man. Mimi ni kama mtu kipofu. Who cannot be used for these works of the gospel? Ambaye hawezi kutumika katika hizo kazi za injili. What such a poor person like me? Na mkini mtu ambaye amepungukiwa kama mimi. The Bible is telling us that God he saw me. Lakini Biblia inatuambia kwa Mungu aliniona. What does it mean by Jesus seeing all of you? Na inamaanisha nini Yesu amewaona nyinyi nyote? Do you have a problem in your life? Je, unao shida katika maisha yako? Do you have a sadness in your life? Je, unao uzuni katika maisha yako? Do you have difficulty in life? Je, unao magumu katika maisha? And if you accurately realize the position of your heart, unapotambua bayana msimamo wa moyo wako. Even God is saying that I saw you. Mungu anasema kwa amekuona tayari. Jesus is saying, "Hey, I saw you." Na Yesu anasema tayari nimekuona. Now I want to come and help you. Nataka nije nikukusaidie. I want to help you so that you can open your eyes. Nataka nikusaidie ili uweze kufungua macho yako. I want to help you so that you can live a new life. Nataka nikukusaidie ili uishi maisha mapya. It is not us who saw Jesus. Na sio sisi ambao tulimuona Yesu. It is Jesus who saw the blind man. Yesu aliyeona kipofu. Even in order for you to have a Jesus to come and see you. Ili 
kwamba uweze kuwa na Yesu ambaye anakuja kukuona. It's not that you have to be a prominent person. Si atu kuwe mtu mashuhuri. It's not that you have to be an able person. Si atu kuwe mtu ambao umeweza. Whenever Jesus comes to whom to see that person to help that person. Na Yesu anakuja kwa nani aweze kumuona huyo mtu? To whom does he come? Ni kwa nani ambaye Yesu anamkujia? He comes to that the blind man. Ni mtu ambaye ni kipofu. Why? Kwa sababu gani? Because Jesus he wants to help you. Ni kwa sababu Yesu anataka kukusaidia. That's why it is very important for us to realize that I am the one who is in the position of a blind man. Diposa ni bora kwetu kutambua kwa mimi ni mtu ambaye niko katika nafasi ya mtu kipofu. When you accurately realize that in your heart. Au unapotambua hivyo bayana ndani ya moyo wako. That is the time that Jesus he will see you. Ndio ndio wakati ambao Yesu atakuona wewe. Jesus. Yesu. I am a blind man. Mimi ni mtu kipofu. There is nothing that I can do. Hakuna kitu chochote ninachoweza kufanya. Since the birth I was born blind. Tangu kuzaliwa nilizaliwa kipofu. Jesus I need your grace. Yesu unahitaji neema yako. Jesus I need your help. Yesu unahitaji msaada wako. Grace, uh, bila neema yako. Without your mercy. Ana bila rehema zako. Jesus there's nothing that I can do. Yesu hakuna chochote ninachoweza kufanya. Ever when your heart goes to that position. Wakati moyo wako inaposhuka katika hiyo nafasi. When your heart goes to that position as a blind man. Wakati moyo wako inaposhuka katika hiyo nafasi kama mtu kipofu. Jesus he says He saw you. Yesu anasema kuwa amekuona wewe. He saw you. Amekuona wewe. Jesus he saw you. Yesu amekuona wewe. Yes, Jesus. Ndio Yesu. I am a lacking person like that. Mimi ni mtu ambaye nimepungukiwa jinsi hii. I cannot even keep my family. Mimi ni mtu ambaye siwezi tunza familia yangu. I cannot even raise my children. Mimi ni mtu ambaye siwezi hata kukuza watoto wangu. I person who cannot even control my heart. Mimi ni mtu ambaye siwezi hata kudhibiti moyo wangu. I am a such a weak and lacking person like this blind man. Mimi ni mtu ambaye nimepungukiwa mdhaifu kama huyu mtu kipofu. Even realizing that is very important in your life. Kutambua hivyo ni kitu cha maana kabisa katika maisha yako. Realizing what? Kutambua nini? Realizing that I am the one who is a blind man. Kutambua kuwa mimi ni mtu ambaye ni kipofu. When you accurately realize that you are the blind man. Unapotambua bayana kuwa wewe ni mtu kipofu. Jesus will come and see you. Yesu atakuja na akuone wewe. Jesus will come and see you. Yesu atakuja na akuone wewe. And he will come to you. Atakuja kwako. And then he will make a clay na atatengeneza udongo na ataweka katika macho yako everyone he was a blind man au uh, huyu mtu kipofu alikuwa ni mtu wa, mtu gani everyone if you look at the last verse unapotazama katika mstari wa mwisho because you say that you are seeing anasema kwa sababu umesema ya kuwa mnaona is that right je ni kweli you say that you are seeing ni kwa sababu unaona you are a sinner nyinyi ni wenye dhambi everyone kila mmoja wenu he was a blind man alikuwa ni mtu kipofu that's why when jesus was putting the clay on his eyes diposa wakati yesu alipokuwa akiweka udongo katika macho yake couldn't complain hangaweza kunungunika jesus yesu what are you doing on my eyes unafanya nini katika macho yako what are you putting on my eyes unafanya nini katika macho yako you why why does this feel all watery ah hii kitu mbona inakaa kana kwamba ina maji even he didn't complain hakunungunika he received whatever Jesus has done for him just the way it is. Akapokea kile ambayo Yesu alimfanyia jinsi ilivyo. And then Jesus told him. Na Yesu akamwambia, "Go wash in the Siloam." Waende ukanawe katika Siloam. He's a blind man. Huyu ni mtu kipofu. He doesn't know where the Siloam is. Hajui pale Siloam iko. How am I supposed to go to Siloam? Mtawezaje kwenda katika Siloam? Jesus. Yesu. I have never been to Siloam. Sijawahi kuwa Siloam. I don't know which direction is which. Hata sijui ni se upande gani. I'm supposed to go to Siloam. Mtawezaje kwenda katika Siloamu? He could not see. Hangeweza kuona. But in his heart, lakini ndani ya moyo wake, he did not receive his thought in his heart. Hakuweza kupokea mawazo yake katika moyo wake. Because he was blind. Kwa sababu alikuwa ni kipofu. Because he didn't have his eyes. Kwa sababu hakukuwa na macho yake. Because he didn't have his own vision. Kwa sababu hakukuwa na mtazamo wake mwenyewe. He was able to receive the word of Jesus the way it is in his heart. Aliweza kupokea neno la Yesu jinsi ilivyo ndani ya moyo wake. Okay. Amen. Amen. I should speak quietly, right? Na staili kuongea katika sauti ya chini. So, kwa hivyo, the blind man, huyu mtu kipofu, he didn't have his eyes. Hakuwa na macho yake. Is that right? Je, ni kweli? Everyone do you have your eyes? Je, mnao macho yenu? Every many people, na watu wengi, they want to walk according to how they see with their eyes. Wanataka kutembea jinsi wanavyoona na macho yao wenyewe. But now, lakini sasa, there is this blind man. Kuna huyu mtu kipofu. He couldn't see. Hangeweza kuona. He didn't have anything that he saw with his eyes. Hakuwa na kitu chochote alichoona na macho yake mwenyewe. So, kwa hivyo, he was able to receive the word of 
Jesus the way it is in his heart. Aliweza kupokea neno la Yesu jinsi ilivyo ndani ya moyo wake. He was born blind. Alizaliwa kipofu. So he has never seen Siloam. Hajaiona Siloamu. He doesn't know where Siloam is. Hajajua Siloamu iko wapi. He doesn't know in which direction that he needs to walk. Hajui ni upande gani anastahili kutembea. Is that right? Je, ni kweli? Maybe there is a stone in front of him. Pengine kuna jiwe mbele yake. What if he walks and then trips and then he falls? Na mbona itakuwaaje akitembea na jikua katika hiyo mawe na anguke? Everyone, you know those are blind